Okay, so welcome in uh, for another trying new makeup releases video. I'm a huge sucker for new makeup releases, so I really can't help but continue to keep trying them. And I always like to do it on camera, so here we are again. I haven't even blow dried my hair, so if it's a little crazy and frizzy, I do apologize. So here's what we're working with today. I finally picked up the new Lancome Tint Edole Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. I uh, wasn't gonna pick it up, saw a lot of people having like good success with it, and one person in particular that also lives in Florida that said it was really good for the humid weather. So I caved, I bought it, here we are, we're gonna try it. We are also working with the new Milani releases, under eye brightener, the contour, and then this one is the liquid highlighter. So I thought we would try those as well. I also caved and picked up the new, well, new, I say new, what's new to me, and it's fairly new, I guess not in the like YouTube new releases makeup world, it's not new, but the Fenty Poutsicle Hydrating Lip Stain. I'm so excited to try this. Like, I think it was just out of stock for a really, really long time, and I couldn't get my hands on it, even though I wanted to try it. So here we are, we're gonna try it today. And then I have picked up a new Gucci blush. Um, I only got one shade. I'm not a millionaire, and so if I don't know that I like the formula, I usually only pick up one shade. So hopefully it's a good shade. I didn't get my, I didn't go for like my normal shade, which is a corally color, more orange. I picked, oh, look at this packaging. It's just so cute. Um, I picked up the Dusty Rose shade. So hopefully this works. It's kind of a mauve color. This is, um, like a little bit smaller than I thought it was, you know? Gucci, for how much you charge me. Better last me a lifetime. All right, so now that you know what we're working with today, let's actually start with the Milani Under Eye Brightener. I'm just gonna go on, I didn't prime my face, but I did put pretty heavy moisturizer on, so I think that's pretty good. We'll go for the Under Eye Brightener. Now, I've seen a lot of people post on YouTube that these can be dupes for the Charlotte Tilbury. Not the Under Eye Brightener, but the contour and the liquid highlighter. I think maybe we could do a side-by-side -side to test whether or not they're a dupe. Um, yeah, okay, we can do that. We'll do one side, the Charlotte Tilbury liquid contour and highlighter, and then we'll do the other side with the Milani, and we'll see how they compare. So we'll just go in with the under eye brightener first. I don't typically use under eye brighteners. I do have like the Becca one, but I don't use it very often. Ooh, it's not focusing. Um, yeah, I'll just draw it to my face. I don't use them very often, like I could, I guess. I don't know why I don't. I guess I just like to rock my bags. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, let's just, I'm gonna use my finger and go in. I did it again. I applied it to both sides instead of seeing how it looked on just one side. That's something I continually do. All right, so I wiped it off the other side so we can like do a comparison. Um, I don't really see that much of a difference. Just being honest. Like, this is the side that I did, this is the side that I didn't do. Do you see a difference? I don't know, it's more radiant, but that's about it. Am I crazy? Like, maybe I'm crazy. Okay, let's, let's try another coat and then see. And same thing, I'm just gonna tap it out with my finger. I mean, usually that works pretty well for an application because it's not taking away a lot of the product, but I'm really not seeing that much of a difference. Like it's just making it radiant. It's not actually like taking away the darkness. Let's do a comparison. Let's take the Becca under eye brightener and like do it on this eye and see how well it works. It's such a like hydrating formula. I don't know, it just didn't really provide a whole lot of coverage. It just made it really radiant. So I'm not like loving the heck out of that. Let's go in with the Becca on the left side and we can see the big difference here between the two. So the Becca is on the left side and the Milani is on the right. I mean, the really, the only difference like between the two in terms of naming is that the Becca calls itself an under eye brightening corrector, where this kind of just calls it, the Milani calls it an under eye brightener, conceal and perfect. I just don't think it did anything. Like you can see that the Becca really brightened and really took away the darkness. This side, it didn't, it just turned it like, it just gave it a sheen and just made it radiant. It didn't, it didn't work. It didn't work on me. And this, they're relatively like the same rosy tone. So um, I'm already not a fan of the Milani. 
I didn't think it did a damn thing. Like that was kind of a waste of money. They're such a different consistency. Like the Becca is really tacky. Like it has a really good stick to it. And it feels like, like a heavier formula. Like it almost feels like a full coverage foundation. It has a consistency that feels like it would actually do something. The Milani is just really, really thin. It's a very watery formula. And I don't think it did a thing. I keep looking in the mirror. I'm like staring at it thinking it's gonna change. Or am I just kidding myself that the Becca did something and the Milani didn't? But I don't think so. I think it just really had no impact. Maybe like the slightest, slightest bit. But it's just not a heavy enough consistency for me. It really doesn't feel like I did a thing. So let's move on into the foundation. Let's see what it says in terms of direction. Shake well, apply liberally 15 minutes before sun exposure. What? This literally says reapply at least every two hours. What are you talking about? Reapply the foundation or reapply your sunscreen? Because what the f Okay, so it says it has broad spectrum SPF 27 up to 24 hours healthy glow skincare foundation, but it literally says on the directions, reapply at least every two hours. I can't imagine they're telling me how to apply my sunscreen. I would assume that the directions on the box are telling me how to apply the foundation. I don't reapply my foundation every two hours and you can't be 24 hour healthy glow skincare foundation if I have to reapply you literally every two hours. That's just the weirdest little direction I've ever seen on a foundation before. It says use a water resistant sunscreen if swimming or sweating. Okay, so let's just move on. I got mine in the shade 105W. I cannot remember at all what that was for, light or fair, I don't know. I can usually bounce back and forth between a foundation that's made for someone with fair skin or like light coverage with neutral undertones. Both usually work okay for me. I don't really have like a summer and winter shade like a lot of people because I don't get a lot of sun exposure on my face. I wouldn't want to even if I could. So I don't change colors with the seasons. I'm pretty pale all year round. So that's the consistency. It's actually quite like liquidy. Um, but it looks like a good shade match for me. I'm just going to use a sponge. I'm not going to do one side with a brush, one side with a, um, geez, Louise, why can I think of a, a sponge? I'm just going to do a sponge all over the face, but I am going to do like one side first and then see how it looks. I could have potentially picked up too much, but that's fine. Whatever. I recently watched a hack from someone on YouTube and I'm gonna like create a dedicated video but what they did was they had a hack for people who get really like cakey or foundations that break apart around the nose because they're like dry skin I don't know anybody I guess could get it but I get it a lot and so it ruins a lot of foundations for me because of that reason and I saw a hack on how to prevent that so I'm literally going to take like one of my problem foundations and I'm going to do a dedicated video and I'm going to try this person's tutorial if that worked for me, so many more foundations would actually work for me if that was like a hack that actually worked and stopped breaking apart around my nose. All right, so I'm pretty far away from the mirror, but it's a light coverage. It's not breaking apart on my nose. It didn't really cover all of my redness. I think it did a pretty good job. It's light though, it's light coverage. I can, I mean, I put quite a bit on. It was like a full pump on one side of my face. But there's your glow right there, the care and glow. It's very nice. All right, I'm going to look up close on my nose. Oh yeah, it looks good. Mm-hmm. I love when it looks good. All right, I'm going to get close up and see if you can see this side of my face. It looks really good on my nose. I didn't do the center, but it's not caking up. It's not too heavy a foundation. It looks really nice. I've been trying a lot of new foundations lately where I didn't try that many over the summer. I say I didn't try that many, but I think I tried like eight. And then in August, it just took off. Tons of new releases came out. So I've been trying a whole bunch of them. And honestly, I didn't like love the Tula skin tint. I'm gonna have to keep trying that. What was the other one that I tried that I didn't love, love, love? The, the Summer Fridays skin tint, I didn't love that either, but I have really been having good luck with foundations lately. So when it does this and it doesn't cake up right on my nose, like immediately, it's already a winner. It's probably gonna be a good foundation for me. I watch, I've been watching Teresa is Dead recently. I'll link her channel below in the description box, but I noticed that she's, 
has the same issue. She just posted a video with the new House Labs foundation. I watched her like apply the foundation sparingly across her nose because she said she gets cake caking issues. Same exact thing for me. That's exactly what happens to me. And I believe that it happens to people with fair skin, fair skin with dry skin. She also has a lot of freckles like I do, which I don't know, it's kind of unusual. Not a lot of people have like fully freckled faces, super pale skin, um, but I think she has a similar complexion to me and I watched her like sparingly put it across her nose and I was like, oh my God, I do that exact same thing. And when I'm watching a lot of beauty YouTube channels, people are just like splashing it on their face. I'm like, yeah, my face can't handle all that foundation. Like what you just did and all that powder, that's gonna look horrible. Like it might look good on camera, but if you looked at me in person, trash, just total trash. So what I'm really, really liking about these like lightweight medium coverage foundations is so far they really haven't been doing the separating and the whatever across my nose. And I think this looks gorgeous, right? Right? I'm happy, let's go in on the other side. I've actually been applying foundations straight to my nose way more than I like did before when I didn't do YouTube. I would really just like stay away from applying any foundation directly to my nose, but I would take what was left over on my sponge and then I would apply it because if I didn't, all it would do is slip right off my nose. It would just break apart. It would look good everywhere else on my face, but it wouldn't look good on my nose. So I think some of it has to do with the like the skin on your nose is just different than the rest of your face and that you probably should be like certain skin types should probably like exfoliate their nose more often. I don't know. I'm going to try this lady's hack and we'll see how it does. Cause like I said, it could literally <laughs> change my foundation game. Like 90% of the foundations I've decluttered actually may work for me because in a lot of ways they work well, except where they break apart. And that's usually across my nose. Okay, um, I'm gonna get really close up so you can see just how gorgeous this is. I think it was a good shade. Like I said, I'm pretty easy. Like I can usually use light with neutral undertones or fair with neutral undertones. A lot of times I can get away with a lot of different shades and it doesn't usually look too bad. So here is it close up. Hopefully it's focusing pretty well. But it looks so good and natural. My giant Lebanese nose. Every one on my dad's side of the family has this giant nose. But it looks really, really good close up. It is that glowy finish, but it looks natural. It doesn't look too heavy. It's not caking around my nose, even though I put it directly on my nose. All right, I'm glad I got the foundation. God dang it. I don't think you care about the concealer, but I am gonna put the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer, Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer on. I really like this concealer. I think that um, if you put like one layer of it on that for me anyway, it doesn't like crease under my eyes. I think it does a really good job for like light to medium coverage with a radiant finish that once I set it down, it's not radiant anymore, but it is actually very hydrating. The one thing that I noticed with the Charlotte Tilbury concealer is I would like touch my eyes later in the day and they'd be really, really smooth. One of the claims that they had with that concealer was like, I don't know, softness or more supple within like an hour after wearing it. And I thought Charlotte and her claims are just crazy, but I actually found that my under eyes were very, very soft. So I have been enjoying that concealer. I, I really haven't been putting it down. It's like the only one that I've been using. Okay, you also don't care about eyebrows. So I will just do those off camera. I'm gonna use my Benefit Precisely My Brow. Okay, eyebrows are on. I thought we would contour and then all powder. I think we'll contour powder and then maybe put the cream highlighter on top of the powder, but I won't powder around that part of my face. I think that's I think that's what we'll do. So this is in the shade Honey, which was 01. It was the lightest shade that they had. Like I said, we'll do one side with Charlotte and we'll do the other side with Milani and we'll see how they compare. I'm always really scared to go into these products. All right, so it's a contour, so we wanna go into like the hollow of my cheek as much as I can. And I'm just gonna draw the line. I think because this is a really like thin formula, it's gonna be super easy to blend in. Let's just start here and then we can like do a side by side with the Charlotte. So I'm just going to bounce this in with a sponge. All right, here she goes. Ooh, I'm scared. I 
I think it's like actually got a warmth to it. I don't think it's fully neutral. The Charlotte Tilbury, I can already tell you, is like definitely a darker contour. So that is the left side. I really like it. I do. So let's go on this side with the Charlotte Tilbury. Can I just say that I really dislike the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. This puff applicator was so much easier to squeeze out because the product is like so tightly packed in here that you just squeeze it a little bit and it comes right out. With this, it's like so much air is actually in the tube itself that you're like squeezing hysterically to get something to come out on this puff applicator. I just, ugh, I didn't like it. I don't like it. All right, so this is gonna be a lot more like dark and a lot more neutral toned than um, the Milani one. All right, let's bounce this one in with like this part of my sponge. Okay, so that's them both. You can see that this one has more warmth. It has like more orange in it than the Charlotte Tilbury one does. I, I mean, I think they were both really nice. They're both already like dried down like they're not sticky, they're not tacky formulas, but the Charlotte Tilbury is just so much darker than this one is. I honestly, I kind of prefer the way the Milani looks to if I'm being honest, it's just more natural for my fair skin. I mean, obviously they made these very very different shades. Like even though this one is made for um fair to medium, that's a pretty big range. Just having like three different shades in the Charlotte Tilbury line where like this is already a pretty dark or deep color. And then this one is like a very, very light tan. So you can tell like just the colors are just so different on these that this almost looks a little muddy for my fair skin. I mean, once I apply powder and like blush and finish up, it doesn't, like it looks really good and, and more natural in the skin, but right now this one looks 10 times less natural than this one does. This one looks like it was really made for um, fair skin tones. However, I would say this almost looks more like a bronzer than an actual contour. So, I mean, that's the only thing. That's the only thing I can really comment is that maybe this is more bronzer shade than it is contour shade. So I think, I think, I think I'm liking the Milani a little bit more. Let's just go ahead and do the forehead. I'll fast forward through this part. Okay, what do you think? I think this looks more contoured, so when you powder it, it's definitely gonna look more sculpted. This looks more bronzy, but I think this looks kind of muddy for the shade that it is because I am fair skinned. Um, I guess we'll have to see like how long it lasts. I wanna swatch these side by side so you can see how absolutely different they are. There are the two different shades. So extremely different. I mean, you can't really make a dupe when, when the lightest shades are like very, very different, but I am liking the Milani more. I, I, I just kind of prefer that like more warmth that it's giving and, and less muddy look that the Charlotte Tilbury one has. All right, so you don't care about powder either. Let me powder really quickly and then we'll come back and we'll do the blush and then the highlighter. I am fully powdered, so what do you think? Which side looks better powdered? I still think the Milani looks better. It just looks more natural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what I'm going with. I'm digging it. I'm digging the contour anyway. The under eye brightener, not so much. Um, all right, let's go into the blush. This is its Cheeks and Eye Powder Luminous Matte in rosy beige, like I mentioned before. And we looked at this little cute packaging. It's very tiny. Here's the inside. All right, let's go in, let's do a swatch of this. Whoa, that's really creamy. So there's the swatch there. It's a really, really neutral mauve shade, so I like that. Let's go in with a brush. I'm gonna go in with a pretty dense brush, I think, just, just cause. This is like a foundation brush, but I don't really care.
All right, so it's pretty pigmented right off the bat. Like I can tell you, you really don't need to build this up too much. I went pretty heavy. I can't tell which side is heavier sometimes when I'm like got these bright lights on, but I like a heavy blush and I don't think that it shows up as well on camera as it does in person. So I mentioned that it's small. So for comparison's sake, I pulled out one of my Pat McGrath blushes and even though this is a, I hate this packaging, like a much more shallow pan, it has 0.34 ounces and this one is 0.19 ounces. So it's actually quite a bit of difference. But I guess like if you're not somebody who buys a lot of blushes, then it makes a big difference because maybe that's the only one that you're using. So that could make a difference for a lot of people, especially for the Gucci price point, but it is Gucci. So let's move on into highlighter. This one is in the shade Lunar. So it's 01. This was again, the lightest shade. And what I have in the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light wand is Pillow Talk. We'll go in with this one on this side and then the Milani on the left side. I mean, they're not gonna be like the exact same for sure. I mean, we're gonna have to look more at like formula and consistency and really the shine because Pillow Talk's like a pinky shade and then this is more champagne gold. So, I mean, we're not gonna get obviously a color comparison. Here are the swatches. There's the Milani and there is the Charlotte Tilbury. So very, very different. I can already tell you that the Milani is a lot thinner than the Charlotte is. It took me a couple of times to like squeeze up to that depth, but the actual applicator itself, I'm hating the Charlotte Tilbury. There's so much air in here that like squeezing, squeezing, squeezing and trying to get it to come out where this is so tightly pressed in there, like one little squeeze, oh, there it is. And that's all you need. This is annoying. Like I have not even used this that many times to be having to like squeeze the entire bottle to get it to come out. So I can, I can say that for application purposes, I really dislike the Charlotte Tilbury one and I'm really enjoying the Milani one. So let's just go ahead and draw it, in, I'll draw it on and I'll tap it out with my finger. That's normally how I would apply it. There she is, totally blended in, perfect. So let's see if this is as easy to apply and to blend as the Charlotte. So it's, it's not as like beaming or glossy, glassy, whatever you want to call it for the Milani as it is the Charlotte Tilbury. And it's not just the lights either. Like that's literally how it looks in person. This is more natural finish and this definitely has a pretty high shine to it. So what you're seeing is pretty true to, at least how it's looking in the viewfinder, pretty true to like how it looks in person. So this is a, a much lighter formula. It's thinner, like I said, even with the swatch, I had to like do it a couple of times on the back of my hand before it really built up the pigmentation to kind of match alongside the swatch of the Charlotte Tilbury. So I can tell that it's a lighter highlighter, but that's not a bad thing. It's just more natural. So it's just not the same. And also the color is pink. And so it's sitting underneath like a pink base. And so it's coming through a little bit more. I mean, it's, it's still more beaming. I mean, let's just be honest, but that those are, oh, look, yeah, I just put a second layer and it builds up quite nice. So that's really pretty with two layers. It actually meshes with the skin a little bit better than the Charlotte Tilbury. I think this looks like it's kind of sitting on top where this really looks like it's kind of like meshing in with my skin, like a lit from within glow. So I'm, I'm really enjoying the Milani ones, really enjoying them. So we are done with all the base products. I'm gonna do eyeshadow off camera because I'm not using anything new. I'm just gonna go in with um, the Weekend Vibes from BH Cosmetics, the Blueberry Muffin Palette. So when we come back, I'll have a pretty bright look on. Okay, um, eyeshadow's on, put on some crazy lashes. I figured I don't have to go anywhere, but now I'm looking at myself and I'm going, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I just realized we have like a bright red <laughs> lip stain to try on in Zesty Bestie. Um, let's see. So I don't have to go anywhere. So let's just go for it. I don't really care and do whatever the heck I want. I do want to swatch it though to see like what color it is. See if it's something that I need to put a lip liner on. I mean, I think it's just like a bright red. Finally, when these came back in stock, I think this was like the only one that was like available. 
So it's actually not as red as I thought it was going to be. It's more orange. That's the swatch. Ignore the Charlotte Tilbury swatch there. Oh wow, there's the stain on my hand. So I think I'll probably still need to line my lips. Okay, uh, no time like the present. Let's just go ahead and throw this bad boy on. I looked to see if there were like any directions on this, whether or not you're supposed to like put it on and then take it off, but I don't think so. I think it provides like a shine over your lips, but like as it fades throughout the day, it stains your lips. I just don't know if you're supposed to like let this dry down or like apply it and go. It's not as like pigmented as I thought it was going to be. It doesn't have as much as of a base. Like it's kind of, it's, it's a really, really liquidy formula. I legitimately feel like a drag queen right now. No offense to any drag queens. I just wasn't thinking about the lip color when I put on the eyes and I don't know what I was thinking with the eyeshadow. Let's wipe it off and see the stain. Let's do that because I'm really interested to see how quickly it will leave a stain. But it's really shiny and I like it. It's very comfortable. It's a very, very thin formula. So I took some of it off. It did leave a pretty good stain. It wasn't on for very long, but I think that I could see this being like a really nice product. I'm gonna try and wear it like over the next day or so, not with this eye look, and like see how it wears so I can update it in the comments. I mean, that's all I can really do because I refuse to leave it on. It was just way not good for this eye look. I don't know what I was thinking. So let's do a wrap up here and let's talk about each of the products. Okay, so for the foundation, uh, I thought it was really nice. I think it's like more heavier coverage the longer it kind of sits. I can see it sinking into my fine lines a little bit, but not, not too bad. And it's not separating about around my nose at all. And I've had it on for quite a while at this point because it took me a while to do the eyeshadow and apply the lashes. So it's been sitting for a good minute and I really like it. Um, I don't find any caking issues, any separating around my nose yet. The only thing that will really change is how long it wears and how it continues to break down throughout the day. So, so far I really liked it. Um, before I set it with powder and it's almost a foundation that I, I wouldn't want to set with powder because it was just, the glow was just really beautiful. All right, let's talk about the Milani, I don't know. The Conceal and Perfect to me was terrible. It didn't seem like it did anything. It didn't really cover any of my darkness. Like even now this eye looks darker than this eye and and same amount of concealer went on both sides. The only difference was that I used the Becca under eye brightener on this side. So I think that this is a useless product. I don't think it did anything. All right, so the liquid contour, I really preferred the tone of it over the Charlotte Tilbury. I prefer the applicator more than the Charlotte Tilbury. You can definitely tell the difference that this was a darker, more neutral tone than this one was, but I do like it. I just don't know if you can really call it a contour at this shade because it's more like a bronzer shade, but it was really nice. And honestly, over like the tone and the application, I preferred it over the Charlotte Tilbury. The highlighter, hmm, it's just such a natural glow on this side. I mean, I had to build it up. I had to put two applications, but it's so natural. Whereas this one looks more icy and like it's sitting on top of the skin and so not as natural looking. I think that I really like the liquid highlighter more than the Charlotte Tilbury one also. Dare I say it? Dare I say it? I, I said it. And I don't think it's the shade. I don't think it's just the shade either. I really like the way this looks over the Charlotte Tilbury. Sorry, not sorry. It is what it is. Um, the Gucci blush, it was, it was good. I, I know that it's a higher price point, but it could have been too hard pressed. It could have been something that was hard to pick up or too powdery. And I thought it was really pigmented. I don't think you had to build it too much, but you really, really could if you wanted to. I thought it was a really good shade. I liked it. It performed well for a powder blush. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the Pat McGrath blushes. I find that I really have to dig into this pan to build it up. I don't think that it comes off like super easily and I don't know why so many people love it. It's just, maybe it's this sh shade, but like look how light it is. 
it is so hard for me to pick up on a brush and apply it to my cheeks like I don't know what the problem is but I'll tell you Pat McGrath blushes everyone says these are super good I don't really care for them I have drugstore blushes that I like more than the Pat McGrath one so in comparison to the Pat McGrath blushes I prefer the Gucci one more I think that if you picked it up you really wouldn't be disappointed it's a really nice blush so finally the lip stain I can already tell you that it definitely stained my lips it had a really really thin formula and it was very glossy but it was very pretty so it really wasn't the like kind that you would really need to line your lips too much I mean you I do most of the time but I don't think you need to it just wasn't that kind of really thick formula that looked like it was gonna slip all over the place so I don't think you need to line your lips but you know you can and the gloss was really nice like really thin really nice really high shine and it stained it pretty quickly like as you can see it still has a stain on my lips and what I did when I took it off is I actually just topped it with a gloss so what I can envision happening with this is that as it fades throughout the day you can, it'll just leave enough of a stain behind that you can go on top of it with a gloss that you throw in your purse or your car or your pocket and it like reinvigorates the lip stain again. So it just continues to really look like, you know, really like you just applied a tinted lip product when, you know, you didn't, you did hours ago. So the only thing I disliked was the Milani eye, under eye corrector, under eye brightener. I just thought that was literally a waste of money. So that's it. That was everything for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you've picked any of these products up or if you're interested in trying any of them. I'd love to hear from you. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.